Hello everyone, this is Justine. Today I'm going to show you 10 more cards using the Card Kit of the Month from Spellbinders. This one's for July and it's called Under the Sea Magic. So yes, there are under the sea elements to it, but there's also different kind of whimsical pieces like unicorns and fairies. So it's kind of a whimsical kit. Uh, if you're interested in seeing everything that comes in the kit, go ahead to my channel and watch the unboxing video where I show everything that the kit includes. It does include 10 cards and envelopes, nine pieces of full size cardstock, so that's eight and a half by 11, a set of 10 dies that you can use over and over, a paper pad that has 40 sheets of single sided paper, which is amazing, the stamp set that you see on the right, puffy alphabet stickers, chipboard embellishments, gemstones, die cut shapes, there's a lot of those, Form, foam squares and adhesive tape. So there's tons of stuff. Now for this card, I chose to use a couple of the dies actually. So I used the seaweed die here that you see to cut out some gold mirrored cardstock and vellum. Now this vellum is very thin and it does have um, a little tendency to be thin and that's kind of the look that it I was going for anyway so um, luckily the art glitter glue does dry clear it does show up just a little bit behind the vellum but I'm okay with just a little bit showing I also cut out the bubbles that you see kind of by the green mermaid in vellum as well now when it dries, it does have a little bit um, behind it, but for the bubble, I think it works. Plus this is an underwater scene anyway, so it kind of makes sense that the bubbles wouldn't be perfect. There's so much in the card kit and I've already made an, a video on my channel making 10 cards. So I will make 10 more cards in this kit, in this video. And I do have some things left over even after doing that. So later in July, I will be posting a what's left over video where I show anything that I have left over after making a ton of cards. <laughs> I really loved these gemstones, especially the different colors that they have because I have not seen the teal before. Uh, color before or the gold with gold flecking gorgeous now this hot pink paper I also have not worked with from spellbinders before but I love it it is so vibrant so I put it with this kind of marbled paper and a floral paper for a pattern on pattern look then I took this circle fairy die cut shape and I'm putting it kind of in the bottom using the rule of thirds here. Then I'm adding a chipboard embellishment piece right to the bottom. I do add a little bit of liquid glue to the chipboard um, stickers so I know it won't come off. Then I'm using my tool in one and adding gemstones to the card. Believe it or not, even after making a lot of cards, I still have gemstones left over at the end. And I'm not really shy about using them up either. I like to use them. This time, I'm not sure why I put the um, double-sided tape on the card base and then put the pattern paper on. I think I just wanted to see what it would look like. But that's the fun part about crafting. You can try things and see what happens. I still haven't found a good place for that little star, but I will at the end of the video. Then I'm going in with a stamp block and some black ink with the stars from the stamp pad. I moved it to the edge so I could get in without the gemstones interrupting my stamp. The ink that it used is black jet archival ink. Now for the second card. I'm going to make it kind of fairy themed, so I'm using the fairy um, silhouette and a couple different sentiments. So it says every little thing you do is, and then I use the word magic. 
Then I nestled the stars kind of around the fairy. I used a little anti-static brush, which does the same thing if you have the mouse pillow, which is the anti-static pouch. Then I'm using my Versamark ink, which is a clear ink that is very sticky. So this is what I use when I use um, heat embossing um, powder. Luckily with the Misty, it keeps everything in place so I can stamp more than once. I really enjoy doing this, especially when there are very delicate images like the fairy wings and the small text. I'm going to use white embossing powder to cover up the ink. Then with my heat gun, I will heat up the powder and it turns into a permanent um, permanent um, raised area, if you will. Um, if you're not familiar with the heat tool, be careful, it gets pretty hot. The nice thing about the pattern paper is you can layer it up on the cardstock and it works with the cardstock that comes in the kit. So I'm using the dark purple and the light purple from the kit on this card. Then with my liquid glue, I'm going to adhere this piece on to my pattern paper. If I had to do this again, I would probably use double-sided tape instead. Since the heat gun warped my paper just a little bit, I find that using the double-sided adhesive helps keep it nice and flat when the paper is warped either from a heat tool or from watercolors. But that's part of learning and the card still looks really cute. Now with this card, it is kind of a pattern paper color explosion. <laughs> I'm using the light pink cardstock with, I like to call it the mermaid tail paper that has the gold foiling on it. Then a strip of floral paper. Then I'm taking, <laughs> dropping it. Then I'm taking two die cut pieces of circles and just layering them on top of each other. And that's that turquoise paper that comes in the kit. Then layering up some flowers and putting my unicorn kind of in the middle of them. I wanted the unicorn to stand out, so I'm using my foam squares to really give it the ability to have a pop. After sticking that on, I found a perfect spot for these little star chipboard pieces, if you will. Now with these flowers, I'm using my hand and my double-sided tweezers, the back of it, to kind of round the petals off. You don't have to use double-sided tweezers. You could use really anything. You could use that jewel picker on the left. You could use the corner of the glue bottle. You could use another finger. Anything to kind of round off the flowers. Then with my double-sided tweezers and liquid glue, I will adhere those flowers on. I like to round up those corners like that because it gives a little bit more dimension to the card. And since my unicorn is popped up, I thought it would look kind of fun if the flowers had some dimension as well. Then I will use my chipboard pieces and I'm using three of the stars. With a little bit of liquid glue, I will put those on. Then on the inside, I used a scrap of that marble paper and this purple unicorn paper embellishment just to put it on the inside. And that will finish off this card. This card had quite a few different pieces of pattern paper scraps. This light pink paper was probably my favorite piece of paper from the pad because it had kind of like the gold marbling on it. It had sparkly stars. Even though it wasn't foiled, it had such a really elegant look to it. And it had music notes on it. I just really was drawn to this one. 
Then I'm going to put another piece of pattern paper, trying to leave a little bit of equal border from the right to the middle to the left, and putting on this kind of ocean looking piece. And I'm going to cover up that starfish with my fairy because I want the fairy to be more of the focal point and not to be a under the sea card, but more of a fairy card. So I'm going to layer on two more pieces of pattern paper. One was the fairy rainbow paper and this little one that's in my hand right now is coordinating with the paper on the left. Then I'm going to take a little embellishment that was from, or a puffy sticker, that was from a card kit from two months ago and it's just been on my desk and I wanted to use it. I thought it was appropriate since fairies are kind of whimsical and fun. Think happy it worked well. Then I added some gemstones to finish off this card. It's very pink. <laughs> All right, for my next card, I am starting with my base is a gold mirrored cardstock piece and it is cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half, which is the standard A2 size card, which all of these cards are, by the way. Then I'm going to take three different pieces of pattern paper to make a background. I'm using that gold foil to mat it without matting each little piece. So it kind of looks like a picture frame to me. Then I layered down a whole bunch of ephemera pieces, the flowers, the rainbow, and the unicorn. Then to bring in the blue tones to the paper and the rainbow, I chose to use the teal gemstones. Sometimes I really do like the busy cards and I thought it needed even something else on the bottom. So I have my mini trimmer and I'm going to trim it down to fit in this little area on the bottom. I'm not sure why I just changed paper trimmers, but I use them both all the time. <laughs> awesome. Now it needs even more in my mind, so I'm using this tiny little heart stamp that comes in the kit and an acrylic block and stamping hearts around my unicorn and flowers just with that same black archival ink. And those little hearts are really small, but they're kind of a fun detail. And you can use them if you run out of gemstones. Now this technique I love using because it stretches the pattern paper quite a bit. I have three pieces that I'm going to use here to create my full background. Putting the two main pieces on either edge with some double-sided tape. I'm going to now put the third piece in the center. And it looks like I have a full sheet of green unicorn paper, but it's actually two pieces, two pieces of scrap. So it's kind of neat. And you can kind of get the most out of your pattern paper without having to use, um, well, really limit your resources, really. You can make them go quite a bit farther if you use them and cut them up. Then I'm going to add a little rainbow and another unicorn. <laughs> I had to because the pattern paper has unicorns on it and it just, it works really well in my brain. And I know unicorns are really in right now and I definitely have quite a few nieces who would maybe like this or maybe a student. Then I will finish off the card by adding some stars. Again, I'm using black just because I think it kind of pops and stands out. It's kind of an edgy look too with all of the pastel colors. If you aren't familiar with the Spellbinders Club items, I will just talk about them briefly here. They have this card kit and they have a stamp set every month and they have numerous dies. So if you're interested in any of those, go ahead and 
check them out. I do have a link in my description that brings you to the club page where you can see all of the options. This month, I really love the stamp set. I've made tons of cards with them already, especially the one that has the sentiment, anything is popsicle. I thought that that was just hilarious and I love a good pun. So I made a couple graduation cards using the anything is popsicle <laughs> sentiment. So if you're interested, go ahead over there, check it out. I do recommend the total value. Um, it gives you all of the items for $100. And it's a great way to build up your stash. So if you are new to crafting and you would like to have a couple stamp sets and dies in your stash, this is a really nice way to start it off. Now with this card, I had to make a card using this mermaid gold pinky pattern paper because of the foiling and the color really spoke to me. So I die cut out a mermaid in gold and I wanted that to match, but maybe not match, but coordinate with these gold dolphins that came in the die cut shape pack. There were two, so I added both of them into this one very special card. I also die cut out with scrap paper, the green seaweed, and I used a little bit of gold mirrored cardstock to make some gold seaweed, and I used scrap to make the um, shells and other pieces of seaweed as well. If you die cut out the seaweed, there is a little middle part that you could just toss and throw away. Uh, or you could add it as a little another piece of seaweed. So those are the little squigglies that you see on the left there. And I will add them to my little cluster on the bottom here very soon. I realized that I didn't add any sort of ground to the bottom of the water here, but since the seaweed is here, it kind of works as the ground. At least in my head, but I don't know say that things need grounding but I could have used another pattern paper piece but maybe next time <laughs> I really liked the dolphins and I kind of wish that they were die cut pieces because I would make a bunch of dolphin cards I could just see it now like a watercolor background and the dolphin and then like a splash into summer so I might have to look online for a dolphin die cut because the ideas are flowing <laughs> Now to match the outside, I will use a scrap of that same pink paper and put it on the other side of the card this time and finish it with a little um, circle and the smallest little starfish that comes in the die cut shapes. I love the inside of this card, my goodness. <laughs> I chose not to add a sentiment to this card because I'm not sure what I will be using it for yet. Maybe a birthday, maybe a thank you, maybe just a simple hello. I'm not sure, but when the time comes, I'll add one. Now this pattern paper, again, this piece was my favorite. I It wasn't even because of the fairy. It was just the background. It really was pretty to me. And this little hexagon piece matches it perfectly and it really makes a fast, simple card. So that's all I'm adding to it. A couple gemstones and that is it. Let the pattern paper work for you. Now on this card, I'm going to stamp onto the pattern paper again, and I'm using the star sentiment, the wish upon a star. You don't have to use the anti-static, but I do find it helpful when I heat emboss to, it kind of keeps all the little pieces off of the pattern paper so the powder only sticks to where the ink is and I just had to look at it briefly to make sure that it was on since this is clear ink so I did just do it twice just to make sure it was really on there then this time I'm going to use the powder that is gold and just kind of scoop it in Sometimes I use a spoon, sometimes not. 
with a quick heat embossing, it is finished. I will use my tape runner and put it onto my gold mirror cardstock as a little bit of a border. Whenever I do that, I kind of justify it in the left and just kind of eyeball the top and bottom and knowing that my measurements are usually pretty good, the other side will work. Using the flower scrap paper, I made a little ground for my fairy to stand on. Not that she needs to stand since she has wings, but there you go. I did finish off the card with some purple gemstones. That's my last card. So if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos in the future. It really does help my channel if you'd hit the like button to reach more people who enjoy card videos like this. Please let me know your favorite card in the comments, and if you have any questions about how I did anything or any of the materials I used, I would be happy to answer any questions you have in the comments. If you buy this kit and make something, I'd love to see what you make on the Facebook group that is linked in the video description. It's all for club items. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a really great day, and happy crafting! Bye!